last week, Tony was speaking about overcoming fear, anxiety, worry. Uh, this morning, I, I feel the Lord wants us to major on fear, on the uh, giant of fear. Now, do you know, fear first came into the world when man sinned. There was no fear here when God made Adam and Eve. It was perfect love, perfect peace. And then Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God. And the first thing Adam did, he hid from God. And when God came to try and find him, he said, Adam, Adam where are you? He said, I hid because I was afraid. And uh, sin will have that effect on us. The moment we sin, there's a sense of guilt and fear will surround us. And we, we just want to hide it might be from someone we've, we've wronged, even someone very close to us, because we know we've done wrong or even thought something wrong. But the great news is, Jesus has come and He has dealt with our sin. He has restored us into a relationship with God. And when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we are restored. We are restored into a proper relationship with God. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life to the full. I've come that you might have life to the full. Tony puts it very well, 10 out of 10. It's John 10, verse 10. 10 out of 10 life. And uh, Jesus said these words, The words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Spirit and they are life. You know, we can hear words which are spirit and is death. Things can be said to us which bring us down, which cripple us, which hurt us. Words are very, very powerful. And that's why it's important to read the Word of God. This morning we were in prison and uh, a young girl got up to read the Scriptures and she had a Bible. She'd obviously been in trouble because most people who are in the prison fellowship ministry are people who've been from that background and have come into the work. And she had a Bible that was almost falling apart. And I said, Eleanor, I love your Bible. Because most people who have a Bible that's almost falling apart won't be falling apart themselves. Because the Word of God will bring us into a place that's right and strong. And I want to say this this morning. If you're troubled by fear, get the Word of God into you. Read the Word of God and let it heal you. I personally have experienced fear. I've experienced it in a very, very deep way awful way. I know what it's like to be so paranoid that I couldn't even go into a shop and, and do the shopping because I, I thought everybody was looking at me, everybody was <coughs> talking about me. And the problem was I was self-centered. I was thinking about me. And the Word of God will bring you God-centered. The Word of God will change us so that we actually look at God and see God. And, and we need God in our lives. God is love. Let's say that together. God is. God is Let's say it together. God, God, God is. is love. Say it with conviction. God, God is. Love. I heard a story this week. This is a fantastic story about a young man who went into a bank to rob the bank, and he had the gun, and everybody was afraid, and he was going to hold the bank up and take the money and shoot anyone who got in his way. When a woman calmly walked over to him and said. Give yourself. And she held her hand up. How did she overcome all that fear? It was love. Because she was his mother. Let that resonate in you. She was his mother. And her love for her son overcame all that fear. John 1 and verse 4 says, God is love. And it goes on to say that perfect love <coughs> drives out fear. You know, we're all growing in, this co in the college of life. And I was thinking this morning that, you know, life is a little bit like ice cream, but it's sort of laced with cyanide. <laughs> it's sort of sweet and it's, you know, you get, you get all sorts in life, don't you, that really come at you, really cause you to chill with fear. Uh, but... We are being schooled into the place of perfect love because God is love. And there is no fear in love. 
And God wants to drive out every vestige of fear in our lives. God has always wanted us to, to be happy. Do you know that? God has always wanted us to be happy. When He made man and woman, He made us to be happy. He's a happy God. He's a happy God. The only problem is, sin is in our lives and in the world. And what a mess it is. But we have the scriptures that can tell us how God wants to deal with us. And uh, if we just turn to the scripture, Exodus 3, verse 7 and 8. When Jesus said, uh, I've come that you might have life in all its fullness. He, he really meant that. And he really does give that. And, and the scriptures, the word of God, teaches about God's ways and, and, and man's ways and how God wants us to, to be. And the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. I'm concerned about their suffering. I want to tell you this morning, if you're struggling in life, God is hearing you cry. He's hearing you cry out and he wants to do something about it. In fact, he has done something about it in Jesus Christ. And he said, I want to take them out. I've come down to rescue them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land. A land flowing with milk and honey. So the story is... God comes and He gets Moses and most of us know the story, the parting of the Red Sea, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, out of slavery, going across the desert to the land of Canaan, the land of promise, a land flowing with milk and honey. But you know, they never went in, not at first, not for the first 40 years anyway. And the reason was they were afraid. If you turn to Numbers 13 and verse 31 Numbers 13 and verse 31 People had gone out into the land of promise they'd gone out to spy and see what it was like and they said we can't attack those people we can't oh, sorry let's start from verse 30 <coughs> Caleb said we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. But the men who have gone up with him said, We can't. We can't attack those people. They're stronger than we are. And they spread about the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explore, explore devours those living in it. All the people we saw there were of a great size. They were giants. 